Welcome to Dropping In, a podcast of storytelling and interviews with your host, Winter Olympian Mercedes Nickel. Thank you for dropping in today. I'm all about being real and true to who I am. I have teamed up with Sway, a company that is all about showcasing the importance of showing up unprocessed, unfiltered, and unapologetically themselves. Seemed like a pretty good fit for me. Sway is a brand built on purpose. Sway is committed to supporting communities and charities across Canada. I've chosen a cause that is dear to me, CanFund, directly supporting Canadian athletes. Sway is making a donation on my behalf to CanFund. Sway is made with real juice and real good vibes. Sway is a delicious tasting vodka soda with nothing to hide. Thank you so much for dropping in today. This is a series, series four of Dropping In, where I have a co-host. I decided to chat with some Team Canada Olympians and that will probably be going to Tokyo in uh, 2020 slash 2021 and thought it would be best to have a summer Olympian with me in the interviews. So I'm proud to have Miss Martha McCabe join me for these 10 episodes of Dropping In. We hope to help you learn and laugh along the way through this series where we chat with some Team Canada athletes. Okay, on this series, I get to introduce the sport as well as the guests that we will be dropping in with. In 2016, it was announced that skateboarding would be added to the Olympics. There will be two disciplines, street and park. And today we focus on street skateboarding. So what does this mean? Riders take two 45-second runs on a course with handrails, stairs, walls, and more. Then the riders get five attempts for best trick. This gives you seven scores, and they pick your best four scores. Everything is judged out of 10, so the end, your score is out of 40. There are five judges watching the runs looking for speed, flow, performance, timing, and stability. Now, the cool thing about this sport is that riders get the choice of tricks, unlike in figure skating where there are mandatory tricks. They also get to choose where they want to go on the course. Our guest first picked up a skateboard in 2001. 16 years later, she wrote her master's thesis on the skateboard industry. Let's back up. In 2006, she did start competing in skateboarding, but with the huge gender pay gap, she decided to stay in school and skateboard only for fun, earning her bachelor's in marketing and master's in business strategy. When word got to her in 2016 that skateboarding will make its Olympic debut at the 2020 Tokyo Games, she got on the circuit to try and qualify. She's a professional skateboarder from Montreal, Canada. She's a three-time national champion, founder of All Girls Skate D8, a skateboarding lessons, offering skateboarding lessons for girls of all ages and abilities in Montreal. She also represents the athletes on the board of Canada Skateboard. She is openly gay and a proud supporter of the LGBTQIA2S community. Also, what hasn't this girl won? She won the Empire Open title in 2018. She was vice champion in 2019. She was crowned Canadian street skating champion in 2020. And she's currently at the top of the Canadian points list on the street league tour. This daughter, friend, professional skateboarder, three-time national champion, X Games competitor is looking to compete at her first Olympics for Team Canada. Let's check in with Annie Guglia. Annie... I don't know if you've watched any dropping in before, but we start with 10 rapid fire questions so the guests can get to know you a little better. Yay. Are you ready to drop in? Yes. Okay. (laughs) Uh, We're going to go back and forth. Again, my co-host, Martha McCabe, summer, not summer Olympian, Olympian. I'm the odd one out. I'm the winter Olympian. That's how it works. I don't know why. Um, Number one. Annie, what are your feelings on rollerblades and scooters? I really don't mind. I honestly think that rollerblading right now is way more punk rock than skateboarding. <laughs> <laughs> but sco- scooters, though, 
scooters, as long as they understand how a skate park works, it's fine. Yeah. But yeah, like sometimes they don't. I it's see so that easy problem. To, okay, can I go on? <laughs> yeah, you can. Because it's, it's way easier to scooter. Like you can just grab it and be able to do it. So they don't, like the kids who scooter, they don't learn how a skate park works before they can actually go everywhere in the skate park. So it's kind of dangerous. Whereas like if you learn skateboarding, you have to learn how to push. And like, it takes a long time before you can actually go fast, yeah. you know? So yeah. that's the only thing. It's kind of like dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Don't get in the skateboarder's way in the skate park and learn the etiquette. Yeah. Exactly. I gotta say, I'm a huge rollerblading fan. I love <laughs> yeah, rollerblading roller- is sick. I think it's <laughs> hilarious. Like I just put those babies on and they make me laugh. They're so yeah. fun. I let lo- I also rollerblade. Um, but I would never go in the skate park. It's same. I'd know better. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, let's get to question two, because this is rapid fire. I know, but it's never rapid. It <laughs> was not rapid, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it's okay. never rapid, don't worry. So uh, your brother gave you your first skateboard as a Christmas present. Mm-hmm. Do you think you would have picked that up without him giving that to you? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I think I would have discovered skateboarding in high school anyways, but I would have been a little bit older. Okay. Interesting. Trying to was, here. Yeah. Because because you because you had a, a girl group in in high school that were all skateboarders. So you think yeah, you they were not in my they're not in my high school, but I met them in 2006, so I was like 15 ish. Okay. But I met a group of guys that I skated with in high school, and um, I got introduced to skateboarding before, so I was not like shy to I don't know skate with the guys or whatever. So I think it really helped like that whole cycle. But um, but I think I would have found a way to like skateboarding in a, like just maybe later. <laughs> totally. Nice. Okay, number three. You've been on the podium many times. I know this can sometimes be difficult for people on the podium, but how hard is it for you to pop a bottle of champagne? Oh, it's so hard. <laughs> I'm the worst um <clears throat> yeah I I try to make it not too obvious like I try to pretend like I know yeah. but like at, I've popped like five bottles in my life <laughs> probably all on the podium too <laughs> <laughs> most of them <laughs> oh, don't worry I don't think you're alone there like most of the time the person like on the top of the podium is just like still trying to get it. And then the people next to them are just like dousing them in champagne. <laughs> yeah, that- and it's funny because the last time it was actually really funny because now with skateboarding, a lot of the, the people who get on podiums now, they're super young, like they're not 18. And the last time the girl who was like, I was third, no, I was second. And the one who was first, she was like 13 or 14 or something. Have this so that was funny because I had to help her. So oh. that, like, I felt like an adult. Sometimes they give sparkling like apple cider to those kids. I think they have to yeah, have it like ready now. Must. I saw that photo of like you on the podium, and there was a tiny girl beside you, and I was just wondering, like, how old is this chick? You just answered, she's thirteen, but that's no, wild. no, no. That's another one. She's okay. a, that one is eleven, and she was oh. ten. Yeah. Okay. Crazy. It's oh. awesome. I like it. That's it is. Cool. That's amazing. So cool. Okay. Okay. So question four, um, what's the best place that you've ever traveled to skateboard? Mm. Um, to skateboard specifically? Yeah. I would say Barcelona. Yes. I knew you were going to say that. That's a good <laughs> I mean, I could have said California, <laughs> no, but Barcelona. like Bar- Barcelona is sick. Cause it's like the architecture is made for skateboarding. Yeah. It's pretty weird yeah that's cool. <laughs> love it there and I've been there for snowboard competitions which sounds weird um but there, yeah, are mountains, there are mountains in Spain yeah and all the whole crew was like so hyped to go skate Barcelona and I don't really skateboard so I just sat there watching <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's it's like um Gaudi like he yes. he's one of the architects there and he like always does like natural quarter pipes and stuff so it's kind cool. of sick oh <laughs> no way you skate those 
um, not the ones like not the obviously not the like the, the very uh, yeah not the um, historic landmark it. yeah his, yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you avoid those <laughs> yeah what is it about is it just like all the like terrain that they they have there that's that like every skateboarder I know goes there yeah it's I don't know it's it's like they it's like they build skate spots okay. uh, oh and there's another um, in Sweden in Sweden <laughs> <laughs> in uh, Malmö they uh, actually have an architect that works for the city who is hired to build skate spots and last time oh, yeah. I went it was like in action so it's pretty sick right now when they build a I don't know a um, government building or something they include skate spots in it and it's like made for skateboarding and it's oh, encouraged so it's really cool I feel like what we're behind it? in that in that's so yeah. cool in Canada all right sorry rapid fire never rapid um number five sorry no no it's it's not you I love getting the information. I'm gonna stop apologizing though yeah it's too Canadian right you're too Canadian uh number five street skateboarding is in the Olympics is there a feature on the course that is your favorite um I like rails Rails. yes it's gonna keep it very I like rails that just sounds painful (laughs) okay this I mean there's always rails and then there's always the big rail I'm I'm not really into like the biggest rails but I like like the normal sized rails (laughs) (laughs) okay so I feel like rails is a term that's like a that could probably apply to snowboarding too. There's rails in snowboarding yes. now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, here we go. I'm from a completely different world than both of you because I hardly know what you're talking about. I know because I've gone for fun to ski at a mountain before. But similarly, this next question, I also only kind of understand because Mercedes wrote it. But, <laughs> um, do you prefer doing like filming or competition? Because for me, and maybe give some background for listeners like myself who barely know what that means. <laughs> okay, so ba- basically the traditional way for skateboarding, especially because it's new to the Olympics, so the traditional way to be a professional skateboarder is like you, for me, for example, I'm a street skateboarder, so I'll go in the streets, I'll film and get photos for magazine and film to film video parts that are like promotional for the brands that I ride with for and stuff like that. So it's like a whole complete different, like outside of competition. And then there's like, there used to be like X Games and Do Tour who are, who are co- competitions, but it wasn't like the tradition, it's not like the normal way of being a professional skateboarder. Mm-hmm. And now with the Olympics, there's this whole new path that was created. And um, it's been like that in snowboarding for a longer, but now it's like um, a lot of skateboarders start skateboarding to do competition, which never happened before. So um, long story short, I'll say um, filming because uh, I-, I love competition, but it, like I've been skateboarding for 20 years and it's very recent. It's only the three last years that I've been competing. So um, filming is like the reason why I love skateboarding, how I got introduced to it. It's like the subculture of skateboarding. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to say that, but I love competing because it's, um, it like, it's the same kind of vibe in the sense that it both push you to commit and like be the best skateboarder you can be. So that's what I try to get from both. Yeah. That cool. makes sense. Yeah. It makes total sense. It's hard because like in, it's the same in snowboarding, <laughs> but it's been longer competition wise in snowboarding. And sometimes Martha, you actually have to choose a path. Because yeah. there's not enough time for snowboarders with the snow and the seasons to do both. Hmm. But, but yeah, that's the, skate, that's skateboarding and you can do in Barcelona. Yeah, I think <laughs> if you, <laughs> I think it's um like I choose to do both because yeah. I mean, but I think the next generation of skateboarders are just going to pick like, mm-hmm. let's say they want to do competition. They're going to work on consistency a lot and like specific tricks and stuff like that. And then because the thing with filming is you have to, it's almost like once in a lifetime tricks all the time. So it's like you build your way up to landing like one trick and then you do something completely different the next day. Whereas competition, you're kind of like always working on like consistency and stuff like that. So it's it's a different approach, but both are, I don't know. For me, I like both, especially because I, I like the pressure of skating competitions and like 
skateboard competitions are events more than just a competition too so mm -hmm. it's a reason to see friends from yeah. all over the world <laughs> i miss that i miss that a lot freaking covid yeah <laughs> uh, okay <laughs> number seven when you're not skating what would people find you doing mm. <laughs> it's been so different with covid though yeah. I, I was gonna say like home <laughs> now you're permanently home. like yeah like um listening to audiobooks and stuff but like in real life I would say probably traveling and like I um have a van and I love just driving I drove to California three years in a row um and I don't know just go hiking and stuff like that I have is your van too, so. is your van like can you sleep in it yeah Oh, mama. I used to know. It's, there's a lot of similarities with snowboarding and skateboarding, obviously. But the fact that you drove to California, I used to go to California every year for like 10 years and I lived down there. Yes. But you're going to the sun, sun, and I'm going to the mountains. Yeah, I'm going to like San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Number eight. Okay. Yeah. Number eight. I'm going to bring it back to the filming here because this is just blowing my mind. <laughs> You've edited a ton of uh, fun videos for your social networks over the past years. Is there one that kind of stands out to you as your favorite or something? Not really, because they're all very different. And for like social media, especially, it's like very, um, I, I, I don't know, it's like in the moment. So like for like the one that pops to mind is one of the last ones I did. And it's like I did three kickflips in one day. And I did like one on ice, one over something with my hands in my pockets and like another one that's very hard to explain, but I'm like, hold, uh, I'm not even going to try. I'm like holding on to something and doing it almost like horizontally. You know <laughs> oh. I saw, I actually saw the video, <laughs> so I know exactly what you're talking about, but other people should go check out your social because it's pretty cool. <laughs> but like that's, that was so random. And I like, I don't know. I it's so pointless like it's <laughs> there's no reason why it and it wasn't planned it just happened and that's what I love about skating I just went like I met up with a couple friends it was minus 17 and we went skating outside and I did that and it was just like super fun so that's that's the thing like I like to say that it's pointless because for me that's how I got introduced to skateboarding like it was never a way like I never thought I would it would be my career so going back to that sometimes is really fun <laughs> I love that that's super cool um we will get to skateboarding outside but first a little tidbit about yourself what is your favorite movie <laughs> oh that's always dang. a good question um yeah it's such a hard question because I'm not a big movie fan like you know like I just watch movies sometimes but like I can say the first thing that came to mind and I have a hard time thinking about anything else is last year I watched The Office eight times like the whole season <laughs> eight times <laughs> so, eight times oh like just on there you go. so there you go. so I mean, movies, that counts. I like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to honestly, one of my favorite movies is like Grease. No, nah, that's a good one. But like, yeah, it's not cool at all for like people who actually like movies, but I <laughs> watch Grease like, like <laughs> don't worry, my, my go-to is usually like the one that pops into my head is Dirty Dancing. So it's on par with Grease. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> Oh man, I'm not even going to share what comes to my mind. I'm oh. I'm the same. I have such bad taste in movies. I just laugh at stupid stuff. So just, we don't need to talk about it. Okay. Anyways, number 10. We want to know now though. Yeah, yeah, what is it? What is it? Like something like Anchorman comes to mind. It's so oh, stupid. Yeah. Or like Wedding Crashers. It's like, I know it's bad, but it just makes me laugh. So I don't yeah. know. <laughs> That's good. Okay, number 10. Um, you live in Quebec, so obviously you've got a pretty solid winter over there. Where do you go? Where like where do you skate in the winter? Um, so, for the before COVID, I used to drive to California. Okay. <laughs> um, no, I not all winter, but like at least like half of the winter. Um, but um, 
we're lucky in, in Montreal, we have two indoor skate parks that are, um, oh. well, relatively close to Montreal. So we like, and with COVID, I was the only person who had access to those. Those, um, So that was like cool and very weird to skate alone for six, like four months. Like totally solo? Yeah, just alone. Oh, that doesn't alone. sound super Every, fun. Nah, like everyone's like, oh, you're so lucky you have access to Taz. And I was like, yeah, it's fun for like a week. Yeah. But like after, but like after four months, just alone, and like it's hard to stay motivated. Like I love skateboarding, yeah. but that's not, that's not it. It sounds like the same. Like with snowboarding, it's like you got your posse and you push each other, and that's kind of how it works and how you progress. So like imagine if people are like, okay, you're the only person who has access to Whistler for like six months. Okay, yes, yeah, sick. And then you go for a couple of days, and you're like, yeah. I don't really like, like after, doing it like, for a day. After a month, <laughs> it's like, well, okay, I'm alone. And then you have four more months. <laughs> so anyways, so, so it, it, yeah, so we have indoor skate parks, which is really cool. Um, like some cities, they just, some people like they can't skate during the whole winter and that's kind of harsh. Um, mm. But I would have had to go to California if I didn't have access to Taz and spin during COVID. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. rapid fire, <laughs> rapid fire is complete. <clears throat> rapid fire questions. Over. I Thank have like you. 50 more questions now. I know. I'll, I'll just settle down, but can I ask just one? Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause like, this is just skateboarding. is like a whole new world. I, I've already said that, but it really is for me. But like, what role does music play? Like, do you listen to it or like, like, yeah. What role does it play? For yeah, you? Both that's, people. that's a really good question. Um, I think it plays a big role, but like, on the sideline um just because i don't know like i a lot of people listen to music when they skate i guess when you swim you can't really do that <laughs> and it gives you i don't know like you feed off music a lot i feel like if you listen to very chill music like you'll have you'll be more mellow but if you listen to like soup like you can know the type of music the person's listening to by how how they're skating almost like uh, like kids they listen to trap music and they're like super slow <laughs> not trap but like in the rap like big yeah. gangster rap or whatever <clears throat> so um yeah and then all the it's funny because now I feel like it's less important because everything's going so fast so when I was growing up like you had to wait sometimes for years until you saw a new video part from your favorite skateboarder for example now with social media it's almost every day but like before and so when they used a certain song for their video part, like it became like some video parts and some songs are just very popular in skateboarding because of that one clip of one pro skater. So it's kind of cool. Like it's like a whole, it's like a whole, yeah, like I said, like a subculture. And like, if I hear a song, I'm like, oh yeah, it's, it's like Andrew Reynolds and Baker three, like <laughs> we all, like, and every skater on the planet knows. You know? <laughs> so it's kind of funny. Do you have headphones in while you're skating or no? If I'm skating by myself, yeah. Like at so the last for four like, months. Yeah. <laughs> but the last year or two, because I was yeah. trying not to like skate with people. Even like last summer we had access. Well, the skate parks were closed for a little bit and then they were open last summer for like a couple months. Um, but I still tried to like social distancing and stuff. So I was sk mostly skating by myself. Right. And um yeah so headphones only if there's no one or if if it's the skate park is not too busy if it's too busy i'll i won't put headphones just because collisions dangerous but yeah collisions and stuff <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> um wicked so i do want to touch on the olympics because i know it's a little controversial i mean maybe it was a little controversial to have skateboarding in the olympics and a lot of skateboarders will are probably like not hyped on it Correct me if I'm wrong, but there's no, like you're a, not wrong. <laughs> there's like a stigma, and it's the same thing in snowboarding. Um, but you kind of jumped right in to try and qualify. Um, and like, what were your thoughts and feelings on everything else? Yeah, well, I actually had that dilemma myself, and mm. um, so it was announced. Well, there were talks about skateboarding being included in the Olympics in like um, 2015 ish. Yeah. 
2016, and then it was announced in 2016 that it would be in the Olympics. And I, at that time, I was doing my um, master's in business strategy, and I had to pick a subject for my master's thesis. And I decided to, like, I changed my subject and I decided to do it on, like, the commercialization of skateboarding and how managers within the skateboarding industry saw that new, like, the Olympics, like, skateboarding being added in the Olympics and how they would adapt their strategies and stuff like that. So I actually did my master's on that because I was, like, I didn't know what, what I thought. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? You did the research. Just, okay, go. Yeah, and I was kind of, and I was kind of, <laughs> like, curious. And so I did that. And then um, in, I finished in 2017. And then I was like, what am I? Yeah. And then I was like, what am I doing? Um, like, do I want to try? And then uh, anyways, so I, I tried the first national championship that we had in 2018. And then I won. <laughs> so I was like, mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> And so, so I was like, okay, damn, okay, that's cool. So I was invited to skate Street League, which is the big, um, like the big, um, I don't know, like the path, the, the new Olympic path, which was already the most like prestigious um, street skateboard competition league, or I don't know how to. Is that Rob Dudex? Is that his <clears throat> league? Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. exactly. So, so, <laughs> so it was a, uh, it was um, now like that was the Olympic path and I was invited to the first world championship that we had um, and then I got 18th so and it, we knew at that time that it would be only the top 20 of each like discipline and gender um, that would go to the Olympics so, um, so Wait, I was like you damn, just, like you I, qualified there no 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 okay. no no but but I was good, like, I was like, like, I, I have a chance, you know, like right. at that point, I was like, if I'm 18th right now and I'm national champion and I'm already starting to accumulate points towards the Olympics, like, I'll just try. Gotcha. <clears throat> Sorry. That's okay. And so I am, um, and so that whole season, um, yeah, I just did all the competition. Anyway, that's not the question. That's not like I'm getting way too far. <laughs> no, I, it's but, awesome. But, but um, yeah. So, anyways, I that's how uh, that's, that's how like I that, that was that, your path. Like, that's I how it, yeah. That's how it happened. And yeah. So I still also like I also had that like uh, I, I didn't cool? know if it was a yeah like is it a good idea for like me like do I really first do I really want to do it like second is it good for skateboarding yeah. to and is it good for me to promote that and blah 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 like all that thing but then it didn't take a long time until I realized like it took like I did the I won the first national championship and then did the world championship and then I was like this is going to be good for skateboarding like it's kind of cool yeah. and then I got a lot of attention which was really cool because um because I'm a woman like it's I think it's cool that like there's more traditional medias talking about the fact that like oh now there's like oh women skateboarders exist <laughs> like, yeah. you know yeah. no like it's kind of so I kind of took that place um because I wanted to inspire more young girls and um and then I don't know cities just started building skate parks which is like I grew up not really having a skate park that made sense like <laughs> my local park was pretty dangerous um <laughs> <laughs> so now they're building really good concrete skate parks and big enough for like the number of kids who want to practice skateboarding and scooter and stuff like that so anyway I, I think so it ended that. up yeah so it, it ended up being really like a really positive thing for for skateboarding for women in skateboarding and for skateboarding outside of California yeah <laughs> like because it's like the industry was so centered in California, like nobody cared about what, what was happening in Australia, Europe, Canada, like anywhere else. But now with the Olympics, it like spread the, yeah. I don't know, the, the visibility bubble. of skate. Yeah. The bubble has gotten bigger. That's, a, that's yeah, what I so, feel. So I think this, all yeah. of this became like really positive for skateboarding. And I think it's yeah. Now I'm like very like I'm convinced it's a good thing. But is that what your thesis? While. Is that what your thesis said? Oh no, no my <laughs> what I said. What I studied 
for my thesis, it was just like um, <clears throat> the, um, so I was studying the discourse of uh, managers within the skateboarding industry about the commercialization of skateboarding. And I just like, basically I found three um, main types of managers. Like the, I call them nostalgics. So people who like their core discourse about like the subculture of skateboarding is way stronger than the discourse about money and commercialization. So they, they're like against big companies entering right. skateboarding you probably have that in snowboarding too <laughs> yeah the core the yeah. core companies that are always going to stay core and then you've got the like just trying to get into the market think it's cool have all the money companies yeah and then there's a um, pragmatics i'm trying to remember and uh, yeah and, and translate at the same time because i did it in french <laughs> pragmatics are like people uh, not, no, opportunists, I think I call them opportunists. They're people who um, basically just don't really care about the subculture. They just see it as a market opportunity. Mm -hmm. And uh, then there's promoters. And those are people, or not people, well, people, yeah, uh, that um, see it as like a virtuous cycle between like, you can make a lot of money and then give it back to the community, grow the community, and then, I don't know, I, they like make a really good um, balance between the two, like the core side of skateboarding and the commercialization. And um, that's the probably the most sustainable way of seeing it. Cool, cool. Um, and I know Martha and I both want to know, are you qualified for Tokyo? Okay. Exactly it. How does the, I'll look. <clears throat> how, when? Wow. <laughs> so um, we were supposed to know last year, obviously, um, but everything got canceled. So now we only have, so we have the 2019 um, season that's in already. And then we have one competition in 2020. And so now the 2021 season is going to be two events and it's in, um, in Iowa in April, no, end of, end of May. And then we have a world championship that hasn't been announced yet, but it's um, it's going to be in Rome nice. in June. Oh, man, they really leave it close for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a, like I'm, I have a training camp in end of April. So I'm leaving for California. I'll stay there for a month and then go to Iowa for Random. the competition <laughs> and then Rome and then Iowa to Rome That's and then hopefully game. Tokyo no no yeah exactly and then we, yeah and then after Rome we'll know but I'll come back home between two uh, between Rome and Tokyo uh, okay. but um but not between the two other ones and not even between the training camp I'll stay in California because of we have a mandatory quarantine mm -hmm. um and stuff like that so it's um it would be too hard to come back home um yeah. it's actually, actually funny because for us in skateboarding, like we have Dutour, but Dutour is like always in Long Beach. Yeah. And so when I saw the invite, I was like, oh, yay, you're going to Long Beach. And then there was like Dutour, Des Moines, Iowa. <laughs> like, and I was like, oh, you're like Iowa, what? COVID. You're like, that's COVID. new. COVID. Yeah. COVID. <laughs> that's new and exciting. Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Martha, any last questions? I mean, no, I have like 50 last questions, so I'm going to hold them all really. But um, I actually saw on your website, you have like a YouTube video explaining your thesis. So I'm going to go back and check that out because some of what you guys were talking about, again, different worlds. And I'm like, how is this even happening? It's so confusing to me. So um, no, just thanks for having me. It was great to chat. And I think you are fulfilling your your goal of inspiring the next generation of young female skateboarders. So keep at it. It's awesome to see. Martha, um, any any advice about the Summer Olympics mm -hmm. for Miss Annie? Hmm. I mean, she's a pro, like, you know, but I think the one thing I always tell, like, athletes going into the Summer Village for the first time is, like, focus on, like, competition first and then the Olympics after you compete, which I know is going to be maybe impossible this year anyways, but there's so many distractions in an Olympic Village. So focus on what you know best, which is you're skateboarding like you're the best at it so keep at it and it's gonna be it's gonna be super fun regardless of what happens and how it gets rolled out 
I just thought about something. You have a skateboard. You're so stoked because most times in the villages, I think it's the same for the summer. They're like vast. And mm-hmm. one tip that I got when I went to my first games was do not walk everywhere. Take the shuttles because it's, it's like very far distances. Totally. And you're training and want to keep your legs. Dude, you're stoked. You have a skateboard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm going to skate everywhere. That's what I do. <laughs> Wicked. Um, okay. Where can people find you? Um, home. Home. <laughs> On Insta- Insta- Instagram. Fa- I use uh, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Okay. And what is, what I are your handles? Website. It's, um, I thought I was funny 10 years ago when I did it. So it's at, and then my name. So like the A at is my yeah. name, is my A at. Uh, at oh. Yeah. oh the at is your a so yeah i don't know how to yeah the at so it's at me and it's the same for tiktok and instagram and then facebook is just my name and my website is nuvia.ca awesome annie thank you so <laughs> much for dropping in with us today <clears throat> probably more of an understandable drop in for a skateboarder of the name of my show <laughs> yes absolutely <laughs> all right um wishing you best of luck in the next coming months and i'm pretty sure you're gonna qualify so we'll see what you want there. thank you As I said earlier, I'm all about being real and true to who I am. That is why I've teamed up with Sway, a company that is all about showcasing the importance of showing up unprocessed, unfiltered, and unapologetically themselves. Kind of like me. (laughs) Sway is a brand built on purpose. Sway is committed to supporting communities and charities across Canada. I've chosen a cause that is dear to me, CanFund, directly supporting Canadian athletes. Sway is making a donation on my behalf to CanFund. Sway is made with real juice and real good vibes. Sway is a delicious tasting vodka soda with nothing to hide. Cheers. Thanks so much for dropping in. You can find all the dropping in episodes on the Dean Blundell Network or on your preferred podcast network where you can subscribe and not miss an episode. 